Let's pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right. Well, I am going to start by telling you what I have often told you. Okay. This is what I watched on YouTube this week. <laughs> I watched this really fascinating program about spies in World War II. And it was spies in England who were trying to um, trick the Germans into thinking that they were going to arrive on D-Day in a totally different place. So they had this whole network of spies set up to, to feed false information to the Germans. And it worked. Um, but it was incredibly dangerous. It was really dangerous for all of these people that were, that were participating in it. And they had to um, almost wear a mask and be a false person. One man, uh, most of them were double agents. The Germans thought they were working for them, but they were actually feeding them all this false information. And one man uh, was actually a triple agent. He was working for the Allies, then he got captured by the Germans, and the Germans wanted him to spy for them, and he said, sure. And he goes to England and immediately says, here's the deal. And um, it's just so fascinating how hard these people worked to such peril for the, the cause of freedom, for their fellow people. They were really brave. They were wearing masks, and you never knew who you could tr truly trust. But the things that were true were true, that good is good, and evil is evil. And evil will make the most of every opportunity so good must defy it and stand against it. So I recommend history. It's always got a good story. And today's story of Queen Esther is another story of political intrigue, of dual identities, of danger. Now Esther has this um, kind of uh, notoriety that it is the only book of the Bible in which God is not specifically mentioned. You can read through the whole book and it never specifically mentions God. But again, good is good and evil is evil. God is present even though we not, might not mention or even notice him. So the story of Esther, we just got a little slice of it in the scriptures. So I'm gonna go back and give a little bit more context. So the king that is in uh, the story, he is the king of the Persians, which is like the third empire that has overrun the Jewish people. They were in this little place that was very strategic and so empire after empire would run them over. Jews were taken from their homeland and so there were Jews that lived in other places besides Jerusalem and that area for generations. They'd been, they'd been there for generations. They made their new homes in these faraway places while still keeping their identity as God's people, as Jews. So it was past the exile, and it's called the diaspora when they're just kind of spread everywhere. So Esther was in the Persian Empire. She was an orphan. Her parents had died, which means she doesn't have her parents or her home family. But Mordecai, who is a kinsman of hers, takes her in, cares for her. Esther is also a Jew. She is also a woman. All of these kind of put you at the bottom of the uh, importance level in this uh, culture. Now her cousin or uncle or kinsman, Mordecai, He's kind of a civil servant. He works for the government, ultimately for the king. And this king, Xerxes, um, he has another name, uh, Ahasuerus. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm just going to call him the king. So the king is um, not a good guy. He's a bully. 
he's kind of a fool. He's played by his advisors. They can manipulate him. He's a party animal. He loves to throw a good feast, drink a lot, and um, have a raucous time. Well, the king has a queen, and her name is Vashti. She's beautiful, of course. Nobody unbeautiful would be fit for the king. And the king sees her as his possession. She's his beautiful object. Um, and so in one of these feasts, he's talking to all these guys about what a beautiful wife he's got. And so he says, hey, go send for my wife. I want to show you all what a smoking hot wife I've got. And Vashti hears that she is summoned to the king, knows that these guys have been drinking for days and days, and says, nope, I'm not going to dance in front of a drunk crowd for him. So she doesn't go, and eventually she is banished from the kingdom. Probably worse than that, but, you know. So um, the king is unhappy and he decides that there needs to be a law because these men are talking about how if even the king's wife won't do what, she, what he wants her to do, what chance do we have to get our own wives to do what we tell them to do? So the king puts forth a new law that says women have to do what we say. And the king goes in search of a new wife, a new queen. He has this contest, this beauty pageant, which is not probably voluntary. If you're kind of good looking, you're gonna line up and let the king um, look you over. And Esther is the one that he chooses because she's beautiful, she's lovely. But as she is taken off to the palace, Mordecai warns her, don't tell anybody that you're a Jew. Keep that to yourself. Right now you are just a beautiful woman. Do not let anyone know. Because even though they've been assimilated, they've been there for generations, Mordecai is working in the government. He knows that there's danger to admit that you are a Jew. So Esther is crowned and she lives in the palace. And in the meantime, Mordecai, um, he must have been like here, there, and everywhere because he hears of a plot to kill the king. And he brings it to the attention of the king and his men. And the king is saved. But he's a Jew, and he still tries to keep a low profile. The king's, one of the king's advisors is named Haman. And you know, um, this whole book of Esther is read and celebrated during the Jewish uh, holiday of Purim. They read the story, and they dress up, and they have all these rituals and every time they say Haman, everybody goes, boo, because he's clearly the bad guy of the story. So Haman, okay, that was a little uh, subdued, but Haman wants all of the civil servants, everybody, to bow down to him because he's second to the king. You should bow down to me. I'm the top dog under the king. But Haman's a Jew, and so he won't do that because he serves the living God, and he doesn't bow down to a mere mortal. And Haman, being kind of the uh, self-centered man that he was, decides, I need to get rid of this guy, and while I'm at it, I need to get rid of his whole kind. None of them are controllable, you know, because he figured out how to control the women, but you can't control the Jews. we got to get rid of them. He decides if they kill them, they can then take their money, take their possessions, add that loot into the royal coffers. And he's so sure of himself that it'll work, that he'll get permission, that he casts lots, which is like he rolls the dice for the day that he's going to do this. So he's rolling the dice saying, okay, maybe it'll be the 12th. Uh, that's when we'll get rid of them all. Again, Mordecai, maybe he was a spy. Mordecai hears about this plot, and he goes to Esther, and he says, you need to say something, because he is going to kill us all. And 
rightfully so, Esther is scared to death. She says, I can't even go to the king without him calling me. He could kill me just for saying, hey, I've got something to say. And Mordecai said, that's true, but if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arrive from another place, but you and your family's father's family will perish. And who knows, you may have come to your royal position for such a time as this. So God, he has faith that God will deliver them somehow. If you don't do it, God will find a way. But maybe this is why you were picked in this awful beauty contest, so that you can save yourself and your people. So she approaches the king, and the first thing she asks is, hey, you want to have a party? And he's like, well, yes, I want to have a party. Name the day. So she says, okay, I'm going to have a party. I'm going to have a feast. Bring Haman with you. Okay. And they have a party, and they have a good time. And she goes to the king and says, hey, can I ask you something? And he says, sure. You want to have another party? And he says, yeah. So the next day, they have another party. And they're drinking, and they're having a good time. And finally, the king says, do you want something, Esther? Uh, you know, is there something that you want? I mean, I could give you almost anything. And so she says, yes, I want to live. I want my people to live. You know, if you're just going to put us into slavery, that'd be one thing, but I don't want to die. And she spills the plot of Haman's plans to kill all of the Jews. She reveals that she herself is a Jew. She reminds him that Mordecai, that guy that saved your life, he's a Jew. He saved your life. And Haman was so sure that his plans would work out. Not only had he thrown the dice for the day, he had set up uh, a gallows. Um, some translations say it's that spike that's ugh, really scary sounding. Some translations say it was a gallows just to get rid of Mordecai because he didn't like that guy. And so the king eventually had Haman um, executed on the gallows. And Haman, boo, he fell into the trap that he had set for others. And a single person speaking up saved the people in this instance. But there are always Hamans in the world. There are always instances of evil seducing people. Good is still good. Evil is still evil, and it exists. Humans like Haman perpetuate it. Humans like that king harbor it. And humans like Esther fear for their lives because of it. But in God's plan, she was sent to act. And in God's plan, you and I also might be sent to act, to do those extraordinary things, like the, the women that um, Mary was talking about, like Esther, like so many of our heroes of the Bible who were just ordinary people put into extraordinary circumstances. That could be you and me. We may be called to step up and speak out and say that hatred has no place among God's people. To proclaim that all people have worth and value, that God loves all. It is a reminder that your place in the world can go from favor to being an object in a minute. Those spies in Britain had no idea if they would succeed. They had no idea. Ultimately, they did, but there was no guarantee. They simply had the conviction that they were doing what was right. Now, after the war, one of those spies was never seen again. They assumed that he was executed. Another spy became a sheep farmer and lived a simple life 
and went back to the ordinary. Another one became a shopkeeper. That extraordinary time came and went, and they did what they could do. I once heard an interview about uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, again, my hero, in which the, uh, the person that was being interviewed uh, was talking about how Bonhoeffer ultimately was killed. Just as Jesus was executed, Bonhoeffer followed Jesus to death. And the interviewer said, that's, that's so sad, because in the end, the bad guys kind of won. And this man who had um, done a project on Bonhoeffer said, but winning was not the point for Bonhoeffer. The point for Bonhoeffer was being faithful to God. And he was. He was faithful to God. We, too, owe our allegiance only to God not to a king, not to an ideology, not to an economic agenda, or anything else that might tempt us to see people as expendable, as less than, or as the cause of problems. Because back then, now, and in the future, evil whispers in the ears of humans and we need to resist it. Because our fate can also turn on a dime, like those spies, like Bonhoeffer, like Esther. And the call is not to be winners or to avoid being losers. The call from God is to be faithful, to resist evil, to do good, and be who God put you on this earth to be. Not always easy, not always clear. But through prayer, through persistence, through discernment, we do the best we can to be faithful, to do good, to walk humbly, and to serve our God. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for Esther. Thank you for Mordecai. Thank you for all who have done what they can to do good in dangerous situations. Lead us and guide us in every day that we too will be faithful, that we too will resist the whispers of evil and do everything we can to do good. Thank you, God, for all of your blessings. Amen.